a quick video today because I've partly covered this subject before. It's an EVS 9000E and the display has gone dim. Let's have a look at it. So the display, you can probably barely see it. It's just about lit. And the other thing is you can hear the machine making a strange hissing noise. So this will be due to failure of DC to DC converter module that's on this lower PCB, which is not the easiest thing to take out. So let's strip that down. A few capacitors in there we need to replace. Right, switched off. So one thing that's a bit of a nuisance is in order to take the bottom off this machine, you have to take the top off and take the front off to get to some screws. So let's begin. I gave you slightly bad information earlier. You don't need to take the front off in order to take the bottom off, but taking the side off was worth it. Right then. So, the So the part we need is right under here somewhere. So we need to take this apart now. Uh, I think we need to slide the drawer out as well from memory. Yes, you can really hear the DC-DC converter squealing away in there. Right, let's uh, remove these cables very carefully, don't want to snap them. Right, so the DC converter is in here, let's give ourselves a bit of space to work. Right, now we can get to this. What doesn't help my cause much today is the element has failed on my desolder pump, so that's uh, out of service. Here are the capacitors of interest. 
I don't know if these are the originals or they may already have been replaced once before. That's supposed to be 10 microfarads. <laughs> Well, it does appear that uh, 33 microfarads isn't the easiest component to get hold of, and I don't have one. So I've selected a 47 microfarad, 105 Celsius component. Uh, it's about 46 microfarads. Um, it's a little high, but what can you do? I don't have the right component at the moment. C205 should be 47 microfarads, I think. bit low, 37. And the last one is this, 20, what's that, uh, 470 microfarad, which is 204. Can't read that one in circuit. Let's uh, desolder one side, even though I don't have my desolder pump. Well, since I had to take it out, I might as well replace it anyway. But what does it read? Now that it's been heated up by soldering on. It was a little low, worth replacing. Looking at the diagram, I've made a mistake. This one, 205, needs to be rated at 50 volt. And I've got a 35 volt component in there, so let's just uh, correct that. Right, there's C206, should be 220 microfarads. Over here. Do they get my finger slipped off? That looks good, that one. Do it one more time. Right, so that's the only capacitor I'm not changing. That's a Nikicon. That's uh, obviously why it survived. So, um, I mean, ideally, I'd have replaced these with higher quality components. And I'm particularly disappointed that I've had to fit a 47 microfarad where a 33 belonged. So it's all a bit non ideal. But. Uh, that's what we have at the moment. I can maybe sort things out later. Let's clean up the board and test it. Okay, we can refit the cans. Which way around did it go? Okay, we can refit the uh, PCB and this connector. I'm concerned that some of the tracks may be starting to split on that connector. Let me have a closer look. No, it's an optical illusion. It's where this plastic here stops, and you see a line, and it looks like all the tracks are split, but it's just uh, 
That's the way it looks. We fit just the two screws in here. You don't put one in there because that's where a screw from the outside goes in. Reconnect these. Right. We'll retest it before we reassemble everything. And that will include at least checking that these buttons seem to work as well. So, first things first, switch it on. I don't know if you can see that, but the display looks a lot happier now. I'll just don't, don't need to see it. Can you see the display? There's a lot of light in here, but there we go. You can see the display okay. So, um, now we'll just do the, a quick check to... I mean, it's already clearly working because when you're pressing buttons, it's saying insert tape. So. What about the play button? Let's get a tape and test it. Not sure play is working or stop. We may have a problem with those connectors. Oh dear. Can't ignore that. Play and stop aren't working. Right, let's have a look. Hmm. It was a silly. It was these connectors here that weren't fully home, not this one I was worrying about. So I'll just check that stop works now. Let's play. Stop. Good. Right, let's uh, reassemble it all. Oh, that's something nice. I think it's better. Oh, the break, plastic's breaking up in there. Gentle with that. It's old equipment. Uh, that's a digital late tape that won't play on this machine. Better. Good.
Well, in a way, I hope you don't find this useful because I hope you never have to repair the display on an EVS 9000. But uh, at least we've covered that off properly. I would have preferred to use better quality capacitors. Uh, low ESR ones are highly recommended. Uh, and I did fit one slightly wrong value. So uh, I may revisit this later, actually, and uh, go through those with better quality components. But uh, it certainly shows you that the job is quite doable. Nothing to be scared about. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, do remember to like, share, and especially subscribe. And I'll do more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.